catch me hollering at the moon. What's up guys and welcome back to Park Pros. Today I have a trip report from my first ever visit to Kennywood in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. For those new to this channel, when I talk about parks, I like to do trip reports rather than give overall park reviews. This goes back to the days where the majority of the coaster community was on forums rather than Instagram and YouTube, but I also prefer them because the experiences you have at a park can be drastically different from trip to trip. So it's not really fair to give a park a review or ranking based on just one or even a few trips. But anyways, my first ever trip to Kennywood was on a Saturday in late August, and the park was every bit as crowded as I anticipated it to be. This was also the second day and second park of my 2020 East Coast road trip. As many of you know, Kennywood's new for 2019 area, Steelers Country, which includes their SNS Hypercoaster Steel Curtain, did not open at all this season. Apparently they're waiting for a part from SNS or something, but I knew that when I planned this trip, so its closure wasn't a factor in my experience at all. Since this was my first ever visit to Kennywood, let's start with a lightning round on the coasters that I was able to get on during this visit. I already did a separate review on the park's amazing Morgan Hypercoaster, Phantom's Revenge, so go check that out after if you haven't yet, but here are my thoughts on the rest of Kennywood's coasters that probably won't ever get their own review. My first ride of the day was Racer, which is their old school 1927 Mobius Racing wooden coaster. This ride is okay, it has some little fun pops of air, but it's pretty tame for the most part, and probably one of my least favorite dueling wooden coasters. Even with them running both sides, I waited a little over half an hour each time I rode it, and that was a pretty standard waiting time for all of the coasters on this day. Besides for Phantom, which was routinely a walk-on or a 10 minute wait pretty much all day thanks to really good operations. The next coaster I rode was Exterminator, which is their indoor spinning wild mouse, and I actually really like this ride. I'm a sucker for coasters with corny themes and it doesn't get much weirder than this one. The spinning on this was actually pretty good as well and being in the dark made it all that more disorienting. This is definitely one of the better wild mouses I've ever been on. Next we have Jackrabbit, their 1920 wooden coaster that just turned 100 years old this year. Jackrabbit is of course known for its crazy double down drop which is absolutely as good as advertised and delivers one of the best airtime moments on any wooden coaster out there. This probably cracks my top 15 or top 20 wooden coasters and I was pretty bummed that this ride had such a long line because it was easily my second favorite coaster in the park. The last coaster I got on was Skyrocket, which I intentionally avoided until the very end of the day because it was running one socially distanced train and the queue was completely full every time I passed it. That being said, the wait ended up being just over an hour, which was way shorter than I was expecting. Skyrocket is... decent. The top of the main hill is trimmed, and you also hit a mid-course after like two elements, so the pacing really isn't that great. The launch isn't too intense either, and the layout isn't very inspiring, but it does have some good elements to it, and it was a fun ride just to sit back and enjoy. Overall, it probably ended up being my third favorite coaster on this visit. Unfortunately, since I was at the park alone, I couldn't ride their other old school wooden coaster, Thunderbolt, since it requires two people to ride. This was kind of a bummer, because it actually looks really good. I love the way that it dives down into the ravine and interacts with Phantom. And then the other credit that I missed out on was Little Phantom, because the line was pretty long and I'm not a weirdo. So sorry Badger State Coasters, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for my Little Phantom review. With the coasters out of the way, let's go over some of the things that I liked about Kennywood. First off, I didn't buy a ticket in advance, and when I got to the park all the ticket booths were closed, so I had to buy one online. I was expecting to drop like 50 or 60 bucks on admission, but was pleasantly surprised that it was only $27 online, which is insanely cheap for this good of a park. The operations for the most part were okay. The lines were long, but for being in a pandemic and having a social distance rose on an August Saturday, I thought they were doing a fine job. Especially considering that steel curtain, which is a capacity monster, was down. I really like how this park is tucked up on the side of the hill and you have the view of the river from certain parts of the park. It's kind of hard to explain, but Kennywood really feels like it has that Pittsburgh blue collar feel to it. It seems like this park has some good food options as well. I had some pulled pork tacos from a local barbecue place and it was one of the best park meals I've ever had. I love how their kids section has smaller versions of the park's bigger rides, like there's a miniature version of the turtle and of course they have little phantoms. I don't know why but I just really like it when parks do stuff like that. I like that in Phantom's queue they have these garbage tubes that go down to the ground. I thought that was kind of a clever way to do it with the queue being elevated. And I was going to say that I love how Kennywood has a nice collection of well-kept classic flat rides. But then they announced last week that they're closing like four of them. So never mind, I guess. Now I briefly mentioned in my Phantom's review video that I did not have the best day at this park. 
and so far everything's been pretty positive in this video for the most part. So let's go over some of the stuff that I did not like about my visit to Kennywood. Let me preface this first one by saying that this was completely my fault, but it still kind of ticked me off a little bit. As soon as I got to the park, I went to the bathroom near Steelers Country. Since Steelers Country has been closed all of 2020, this corner of the park was completely empty. After using this bathroom, I went to get in line for Racer, which is like 100 feet away. After about 5 minutes in the line for Racer, I realized that I had left my sunglasses on the sink in the counter of the bathroom. So I immediately got out of line, walked the 30 seconds back to the bathroom, and found that my sunglasses were gone. I talked to a park employee who was working as a bathroom attendant, and he said that he hadn't seen anything, and I checked in at the park's lost and found multiple times throughout the day with no luck. So within the 5 minutes and 30 seconds that I left them unattended in the bathroom, either a park employee or patron got themselves a new $250 pair of sunglasses. Again, this was obviously not the park's fault, but I was like, come on, really? Now on to my main grievance with this park, and this one was just bizarre. This was an extremely hot day in late August, and it was consistently 90 to 95 degrees throughout the day. I noticed that all the park's water fountains were closed off, probably because of the virus. And so I thought, fine, I'll just go to one of the food or drink places and ask for a cup of water. I spent the next half an hour doing laps around the park looking for any place that I could just get some water without waiting in a massive line. Seriously, every food and drink place in the entire park had queues spilling onto the midway. Next I tried to hit some of the vending machines, but they were cash only and I didn't have any on me. So after about 45 minutes of wandering around the park completely dehydrated, I finally found a gift shop in the back of the park selling $4 bottles of water. And I bought three of them. And I wasn't the only person complaining about this problem either. Once I had my water bottles, I legitimately had three groups come up to me asking where I found them. This is something so simple that could have been easily avoided by the park anticipating the hot weather and setting up some designated water stands across the park. I can look past major ride closures while you're waiting for parts, I can look past long lines caused by a pandemic, but overlooking something so simple like this, this was just weird. Another thing, the patrons in this park were just so bad at social distancing. People were constantly pushing up in line and ignoring the 6 feet markers while doing a horrible job of mask wearing. And I don't know about you, but my ability to enjoy a ride drops significantly when the people in the row in front of me rip off their masks as soon as we hit the lift hill. But I will give credit to the park though, because there were multiple times throughout the day that park employees walked through the queues regulating distancing and telling people to put their masks back on. Last thing, their famous walkthrough attraction called No Noah's Ark was closed, which I was really looking forward to doing, but again, we're in a pandemic. Fine. To be fair, I didn't hate my day at Kennywood, but I did leave the park feeling a little disappointed. Between the ride closures, the heat, and just visiting during the pandemic in general, I definitely didn't get Kennywood at its very best, which on the bright side just gives me a good reason to come back soon. With that being said, this was probably one of my least favorite days on the trip. Like I said, being able to get a bunch of rides on Phantom's Revenge made this stop more than worthwhile, but I really feel like I didn't get an authentic Kennywood experience. So to sum up my thoughts on Kennywood, my first visit was just… okay. I think this is a park that I'd really like on a more normal day when everything is open because it does have a lot of charm. And luckily it isn't too far away, so it's a place I'll definitely try to get back to once they get Steel Curtain back open. And I'd take any excuse to get more laps on Phantom's Revenge. That's it for my Kennywood trip report. If you've enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. As always, thank you guys for checking out the video, and we'll see you all next time.